So in my presentation right now, I'm going to actually look at systems thinking, beginning with the word we use in common language, self. And we're going to dive deeply into that word because as a leader, you of course have self-leadership where you bring yourself to the process of empowering oneself to have visions and intentions and to inspire the people working uh, with you and, and within your organization to actually achieve the goals that are set out in the organizational mission. And that's all beautiful, the idea of separate selves collecting together and working together. But we're gonna also look at the self from a, a deeper perspective that I think has a profound influence on leadership, on anyone who is a leader or anyone coaching a leader. And that is to look at the linguistic term self as a meaning structure that's often equated with something that goes on within your body, so it's encased by the skin, but also that's often seen as encased by your skull. And this comes from what the uh, uh, philosopher Andy Clark calls a brain-bound version of the mind, that it's just coming from the brain. Uh, and we've questioned that in the field of interpersonal neurobiology to say, well, as Francisco Varela and uh, Evan Thompson uh, and uh, Eleanor Roche said, years ago in a book called The Embodied Mind, that we have more than just what's going on in the head, it's fully embodied. But what we're looking at here is the possibility that the mind and the self from which it arises is coming from more than just what's encased by your skin. And this can get people feeling a little uneasy because we so often associate the word self with this notion of the body and perhaps even its brain. So on the first slide, uh, let's just take a look at where uh, we're going to draw upon from the science. We're saying that when you look at this process we've been talking about from the very beginning, uh, that from an interpersonal neurobiology view, we see the mind as defined as an embodied and relational process. So beyond the skull, it's fully embodied, but beyond the body, it is relational. It's happening not just within you, it's happening between you and other people, and even between you and the planet, you and your environment. And we've seen that when you define it that way, you say, well, what kind of process is it? And we're saying it's the emergent self-organizing process that is both embodied and relational. And we've seen that to optimize self-organization, you actually go between chaos on one hand and rigidity on the other, and you create that sense of harmony through a process called integration, the linkage of differentiated parts. Now, a leader understanding this can see when an organization won't function well when in fact there's either excessive differentiation and no linkage or excessive linkage without differentiation. You need to balance these two processes to achieve optimal well-being in the organization but also innovation and as you can see on that first slide, kindness and compassion.